Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is former New England Patriots and Tennessee Volunteer star wide receiver Stanley Morgan. Later in the show, details of Mark Gasol's new deal with the Grizzlies, and we'll hear from Mississippi State first-year head basketball coach Ben Howland. But we begin with one of the Tennessee Vols' all-time greats. Wide receiver Stanley Morgan starred for the Big Orange from 1973 through 1976. In an era when the passing game was far from the first option, the South Carolina native would go on to produce a stellar four-year career in which he produced over 4,600 all-purpose yards, a Vols record that still stands today. Stanley would then move on to the NFL as a first-round selection of the New England Patriots. He would play there from 1977 through 1989 before finishing his career in 1990 with the Indianapolis Colts. In his stellar 14-year career in the NFL, he would amass more than 10,000 receiving yards, make four Pro Bowl appearances, and lead the league in yards per reception three times. In 1985, he would play in Super Bowl XX, but the Patriots were no match for the Monsters of the Midway, the Chicago Bears. Today, Stanley Morgan joins me to talk about his experiences with both the Vols and the Patriots and tells us about the unusual circumstances that led him to Knoxville, plus his thoughts on Bob Kraft, Deflategate, and today's pass-happy NFL. And it's all next on Sports Files. Stanley, great to see you again. Thanks for being on the show. It's good to be here. Thank Appreciate you. that. What are you up to these days, you and the family? Uh, being a retired grandpa, spending time with my grandkids and playing as much golf as I can get. How well are you playing that game of golf, which we know uh, and love and hate at the same time? I can, uh, I can hold my own. I'll put it that way. Do you get to, uh, to play in events that are associated with Tennessee, your alma mater, and the New England Patriots, or the National Football League, or is it just going around with buddies and, and playing on a Saturday or Sunday? No, morning? we. Uh, I play in the NFL tournaments. They have an NFL Alumni Association, and uh, we get a, get to go around and play in these tournaments and raise money for different charities. Uh, my wife and I put on a golf tournament for the University of Tennessee where we raise scholarship money for student athletes there. Very nice. That's the Alex Haley? Yeah, we tournament. call it the Alex Haley. They gave us permission to use his name, so uh, we got a chance to meet with his people. and Fantastic. Yeah, so everything worked out good. Well, besides spending time with the, the grandchildren, <laughs> obviously your wife playing golf, this function you talked about at Tennessee, how often do you get to do some things associated with your alma mater? How often do you get to go back to see games or how often do you get to go watch the Patriots play? We get back to Knoxville probably two, three times a year. Uh, we go back for the football games. We def definitely uh, go back for homecoming. Right. And uh, my wife goes to the game and I go play golf. <laughs> <laughs> really? So it's, it's, it's a little reversal there. So uh, I, I've had my little share of football. So I watch it every now and then. I keep up with Tennessee. I keep up with the Patriots. And uh, uh, Bob Kraft does a good job in bringing the old guys back in every now and then. So I get a chance to go up there and visit with those guys and walk around New England and stick my chest out a little bit. Why not? You remember the Patriots <laughs> Hall of Fame. The pride that you get when you see the Patriots do well, winning another Super Bowl this past year. Steven Gostowski, a kicker from the University of Memphis, who helped that team win the yes, Super Bowl. How much pride do you have when you see your oh, teams man, do well? I, I love it, and uh, we we go over to uh, some friends of ours, and they have a little Super Bowl party, so deck down in my little Patriot gear. So, <laughs> <laughs> and when they and when they win, it's even uh, special. You know, I just. Uh, 
uh, would mind catching a few balls from Brady. It would be pretty good. Oh, huh? yeah, because they are throwing the ball left and right. And, you know, back when I was playing, we were a running team. We didn't throw the ball that much. So You were a running team, yet you had over 1,000 yards receiving four different seasons. You were a four-time pro bowler. You have lots of huge numbers. So how much better would they be today with what we just said well, if you played in, a, in an era of throwing the ball? Oh, well, I would love it uh, because the, the – the one thing that I really had back in those days was speed. Right. So I, I could uh, I could definitely push the defense <laughs> a little deep. So, What do you think the biggest difference is between players today and players during your era? And uh, I'm not talking about contracts and how much they're making and that. On the field, what's the biggest difference? I would say the, the guys are probably more athletic than we were, uh, especially in different positions. Um, I think they're, they're bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, Why do you and, think it is that way? Well, is that just like evolution? or is Well, that I think of... you, you just look at the way they're growing up now. Mm -hmm. you, when we grew up, we didn't have a product that you can go and buy that will help you gain weight. Uh, you go on the Internet now, you can find all these weight products, uh, so the kids are developing faster than we did, I would say. You're, you're talking but, about the legal ones, right? The <laughs> don't put words. Right, right, right. But making sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think that's the biggest difference right now. Okay. Um, the Patriots always seem to be in the middle of something, some controversy. I don't know what it is. Deflategate, when you first heard about it, what were your thoughts? Uh, I, here we go again. Right. You know, er everybody hates a winner. And I think uh, Belichick has done a tremendous job up there. Uh, you hear deflate gate. I'm like, one or two ounces in the... Uh, Do you think it makes a difference? I, I, I don't see how. I, I, just, I just don't. Uh, you, and as a receiver, you never think about something like that. You just catch football. You don't, oh, this is a little soft. This is a little, you know... You wouldn't be able to tell, would you? No, unless you couldn't. it was really infl like really uh, well, deflated. really really deflated. Right. You probably could, but one or two pounds, I I, I don't see the difference. This is just a, a, a guess on your part. It's a guess on everybody's part right now. But do you believe Roger Goodell, after meeting with Tom Brady, will reduce his four-game suspension? I, well, I think he will. I, I, I think a four-game suspension is too much for for what they're saying that he did. And if he did that, then I think the Super Bowl proved different. That, uh, you know, all football is different, uh, the same. And uh, I, I, think, I think it'll probably be reduced to about two games. You played for them, of course. You're going to have a little bit of a bias. But do you believe the Patriots are the best organization in, in the NFL? I think so right now they are. I think uh, they got a great coach in who can take players coming in and he got a good system where anybody can get in that system and play. And uh, because if you look at the Patriots, they're losing good players every year, but they got new guys coming in that's picking up the slack. I'll get back to the Patriots in a second, but I want to go to your alma mater, go back to Tennessee when you played there. You still hold the all-purpose yardage record at Tennessee. Uh, what was it like playing for the Big Orange, playing on the Hill, and why Tennessee when you're a South Carolina guy? Well, I, uh, coming out of high school, I was, uh, I'm probably, Clemson was right there in my backyard, mm -hmm. uh, about 15 miles. And Clemson in South Carolina was probably at my door every day. And I wanted to get to the NFL. That was my ultimate goal. And during the 70s, if you remember correctly, the ACC was more of a basketball conference. Sure. Than football. A lot different than it is today. Yes. And, Although it's uh, both today. Yeah. And uh, uh, I looked at Tennessee and I thought they had a better football program. And I felt if I could go to Tennessee, play there, and make that team, that I, that would give me a better opportunity to get into the NFL. And it worked and, out well. And it worked out well. But one thing that people don't know is I signed with South Carolina. Oh, you did? I signed with South Carolina, Paul Diesel, and, uh, and, and I got out of it because South Carolina went independent. 
that year. Independent schools where the other conferences don't recognize independent schools. Because they got out of uh, the ACC, I was able to get out of that contract. If not, I would have had to set out a year or go to South Carolina. Interesting. So South Carolina probably having a tough time to fill its schedule. There's not going to be a lot of TV games. You're not going to get that exposure, which makes a lot of sense. So you played under Johnny Majors? No, I played under Bill Battle. Under Bill Battle. What was he like? Bill was a, uh, was a good coach. He was a, a, had a good mind. Uh, I just didn't – we had our differences uh, when he put me in the backfield. I, I, I really didn't want to be in the backfield, uh, but they felt that they had to get the ball to me a lot more, and uh, we didn't throw the football that much. Even with Condris Holloway as quarterback, right. uh, we didn't throw the football that much. Well, nobody did, actually, uh, back then that era. So, so they had to find a way to get you the ball. They it's had almost find, understanding. It's understandable, well, I, right? I understood it, but I was only about 170 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and so after some games, I would just go to my room and just lay down. It, it was tough. What was the biggest hit on you? Can you recall in college? I, I, I really can't. Uh, I pro probably don't even remember because it was so big. How many concussions do you think you had over that were diagnosed or maybe not diagnosed over the course of both your collegiate career and in the NFL? Oh, it's up in the double digits. There was a uh, couple of times that I was caught it off in New England and I woke up in the hospital. So I've been hit pretty good. Did you ever continue to play in a game when you were diagnosed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did they say keep playing, Stanley? Or did uh, you well, just do it on it, your own? It, it, I would say it was probably on our own. Uh, nobody knew anything about concussions. And, you know, back in the day, the doctor just looked at you and say. How many fingers do you see? Right. Well, I see two. Well, you good. You can go back in the game. Wow. So that's the way it was. And you, we really didn't want to come out of the game anyway. Of course not, because you're a competitor, yeah. as are all athletes. But it's a hot-button topic today, no question about it, with, yeah. with concussions. Uh, I know you pretty well. I think all your wits are, are there. But do you ever feel like uh, there's, there's, God forbid, there could be some damage and some long – well, lasting uh, effects? I know it is. Uh, probably about seven, six, seven years ago, I started having headaches. Ah. And I know that's a sign uh, from that. Uh, my neck, I know I have a neck injury that is going to cause me some problems. Right. So that's why I'm going to the doc now, to the rehab place, to get my physical therapy. Exactly. So, uh, Super Bowl twenty. Six catches, good, solid, individual performance. But what a, what a performance by the Chicago Bears. Do you, believe, do you believe the Bears, that team, is the greatest team in history? I think their defense is. Defensively, I think they're one of the best defense that, uh, coming up during that era. Uh, they, were, they were just good. That, that front seven, you just couldn't, you couldn't handle that front seven. Uh, the secondary was mediocre, but you, they didn't ha you didn't have time to throw the football deep. So Singletary the, and Hampton yeah. and the Fridge, all those guys. Yeah. Do you relive the game a lot in your mind, or do you put it away? It's in storage. Well, when it happened, I did. That was probably the worst offseason I ever had. Wow. Uh, you know, you, you lose a Super Bowl like that, and to get beat that badly, it, it just doesn't sit well. And you never know if you'll get the opportunity you, again, you, and, you, and you didn't. That, that, that's true. That's, that's exactly what happens. You were elected to, as I mentioned earlier, the Patriots Hall of Fame in 2007. And well-deserved, may I add, but uh, what was that honor like for you? Oh, it was great. It was just great to be recognized. Uh, I, I was a little disturbed earlier because I wasn't there. Uh, but when Kraft took over and made it the way he made it, uh, the fans voted. And they, uh, they approved of what I did. Do you think, when you look back at the history of, of football, that you will be looked back at as one of the most underrated receivers that ever played the game? 
That's, see, that's why I need my wife here to talk about that. She, I know what she, she would she, say. She, she could tell you. I mean, you could look but, at the numbers uh, well, over 10,000 yards and say, you should be considered for the NFL Hall of Fame. And yet, as you said, there was a delay getting you into the Patriots Hall of Fame, for goodness it, sakes. It, it, it's uh, disturbed me a little bit. My wife, uh, she would calm me down, and now I just don't think about it. You know, if it happens, it happens. I think I have the numbers. Uh, I think I have better numbers than some of the guys that are in the Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, in, a non I, I, in a non-passing era. Well, that, that, that's what I thought. I thought the Hall of Fame is what you did for that team at, with what you had. During and that time period. During that time, but because we wasn't in the playoffs uh, playing for Super Bowls, I think that hurt me. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Greatest player you played with and against? Uh, probably the greatest player I played with was a defensive back, Mike Haynes. Sure. Love Mike. Uh, love. He, he's a great guy. He's a competitor. And I think I'm the receiver I was because of him. And the greatest player you played against? Who? Uh, there, there was a lot of players. Uh, was there a D-back that just, he had your lunch money? I mean, you just. I, 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 practicing, going against Mike in practice. So it was Mike all around. Yeah, it was. It really was. Well, that's I think a Hall Mike, of Famer, yeah, so it's a Mike, good choice. And then when he went to Oakland, we played against him in a game a couple of times, and it was very interesting. <laughs> good, good little rivalry there. <laughs> Stanley, you're off the hot seat, but we like to finish every interview with something called Five for the Road. So I just need quick answers to these five questions. Okay. Okay. First one is, what is your favorite professional sports team? And you can't say the Patriots. Any sport. Any sport. I go with, uh, uh, I, lo I love the, uh, the Golden State Warriors. Golden State Warriors. Are you a bandwagon jumper? I am. <laughs> I am, big time. Favorite pro athlete of all time? Football. Any sport? Any sport. You have to go with Michael Jordan. Okay. Favorite music? What do you like to listen to or an artist? Oh, I love uh, P-Funk. P-Funk? P-Funk. I grew up in the 70s. And I grew up with Funkadelic, Parliament, Bootsy, George Clinton, George Clinton, Bootsy, Co Bootsy uh, Collins, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my little sister got me hooked onto that. Uh, get out of here. Yeah, she loved that, all the albums. <laughs> uh, favorite movie of all time? Jason Bourne. So um, that was the character. What was the name of the? Uh, what was the name of the Born movie? Born Identity, right? Born Identity. And, and, all, exactly the other, right. and, the and all the other ones. Wow. Okay. And uh, how about your favorite television show? Uh, Scandal. Scandal? Scandal. By the way, if it was a sports movie, what would it be? i go with The Longest Yard. The Longest Yard. Good choices. Stanley, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Hit them long, hit them straight, all right? That, that's, the, that's the name of the game. That's the idea, right? That's Stanley Morgan. We'll take a short break. Overtime is next. Always good to see Stanley Morgan, who has called Memphis home since the early 80s when he split time between the Bluff City and New England. Now to round ball and the times they are a changing at Mississippi State. After three rough years under former head coach Rick Ray, the Dogs reached out to veteran head coach Ben Hallen to take over the program beginning this season. The 58-year-old becomes the 20th head coach in Bulldogs history. Hallen was the Naismith National Coach of the Year winner in 2002. He led three different schools to the NCAA tournament, including the UCLA Bruins, who twice made the Final Four under Hallen, losing in the 2006 National Championship game to Florida and in the 2007 National Semifinals once again to the Gators. Hallen was hired by the Bulldogs in March, and several months later, we had a chance to catch up with him to chat about his new job and his expectations. Why did you feel this was a good opportunity to come to Mississippi State? Well, I think they've had great success in the past. When you look at the history of the program, and I love following college basketball, uh, you look back to Babe McCarthy and what he did and, and what he meant to the university. And then in recent history, you look at Richard Williams leading the program not only to the Final Four, but the previous year they went to the Sweet 16, 95, 96, phenomenal back-to-back -back years. He had great success, and I think Rick Stansberry did a phenomenal job over his 14-year tenure. So you've had a lot of success in basketball in the past at Mississippi State with some outstanding coaches and great players. 
And so wherever they've had success in the past, I feel like you have a good chance to have success in the future. We've got a lot of work to do, but I'm really excited and think we've got great facilities, a great university to sell, and great fans to support the team. With that kind of tradition, what kind of pressure does that put on you? Well, we always have pressure. We expect to win. We expect to win, uh, you know, immediately. And it uh, puts a lot of pressure because I think the most important pressure you ever have as a coach is what comes internally from yourself. And if you don't put pressure on yourself, then you shouldn't be in this business to begin with. <laughs> How much did you miss coaching while you were out uh, analyzing basketball? Well, I really missed it, and especially this last year, I, I was involved in a lot of media work, as you pointed out, with Fox and with NBC, both. Uh, I'm doing cross-country trips every week, but I really, uh, you know, got to miss it a lot, just being around it, especially doing games in person and being around the kids and being at the practices and being around the coaches. It's just, you know, it's what, what a great life to have been a coach my entire career. I mean, most people, you know, they got to get up and have a real job. I actually love what I do and feel very passionate about my profession. So aside from Kentucky and Florida, the rest of the league hasn't had a lot of consistency. What do you have to do to be a consistent contender in this league? Well, I'll tell you what, I think there's been a lot of good teams when you look at the last 10 years. I mean, we're comparing the rest of the league to Kentucky, who's been the Final Four three or four times in the last 10 years. Florida's won national championships. Kentucky won one. So th those teams are f have done a phenomenal job. Uh, and, you know, especially, you know, recently with Cal Perry in Kentucky, Billy Donovan, my, my team's at UCLA, lost to them uh, in the, to Florida twice in the Final Fours in 06 and 07. So I know firsthand how good they were. But uh, I think our team's on the uprise. I think you're seeing a lot of great coaches coming to the league right now. I think it's going to be very competitive, and it's going to raise the level of the conference. And so that's going to be great in terms of more teams getting into the NCAA tournament on a year-end basis. Obviously, you had a good year recruiting. Tell us about Malik Newman. What's he going to bring to the team? I think Malik Newman's one of the best players in the country, and it's really special to have a young man from Jackson, Mississippi, two hours away from campus to elect to stay home and play in front of the fans in his home state and to play at the university where his father, Horatio Webster, played and was such a great player for Mississippi State and the Bulldogs. So we're very blessed. I'm very grateful that we're able to keep him home. He's going to be an outstanding point guard for us. He scores the ball so well. He's a very, very good shooter, a very good scorer. He's a good decision maker with the ball, and I think he has tons of upside, and it'll be my job to help him reach his potential so he can move on to the NBA. Based on the talent you've got in camp right now, what's the style of play going to be? What, what are people going to see from Mississippi State? Well, we're going to play man-to-man -man defense primarily. That's what I believe in, and we're really going to emphasize doing a great job getting back in transition, forcing people to have to really work hard to score against us, against our half-court set defense. And offensively, we're going to push it every time we get it, made or missed shots by our opponent. And then if we don't have a good shot early in the possession, then we're going to really try to execute and set good screens and move the ball and change it from side to side and get it inside and back out, set good screens for one another and play unselfishly. What are your expect expectations for this year? Well, I'm really excited about this year. You know, we're still finishing up our schedule right now. We've got a couple more games to do. I know the SEC is going to be very, very tough when you look at the, the conference, but we're excited to get started and uh, really looking forward to competing. What's your message today for the fan faithful? Just appreciate the opportunity to be their coach, and I'm so excited to be here at Mississippi State and really hope that everyone will come down to the hump next basketball season and support the team because the key to having a home court advantage is having great fans there to support their team. Hallen is already off to a great start at Mississippi State with the April signing of the nation's top-ranked guard, Malik Newman, whose father also played at Mississippi State. Speaking of hoops, Grizzlies fans are breathing a big sigh of relief after the team's signing of All-Star center Marcus Saul to a new five-year max contract worth around $110 million. He will have a player option after four years of that deal. It was not a shocker that Big Spain decided to stay with the Grizzlies, but getting him for five years was incredible news for the organization. And that'll do it for this week's show. Don't forget you can see any of our previous shows by going to our website, WKNO.org. 
Next week, it's a special Sports Files program with NBA legend Irvin Magic Johnson. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.